You know, last last Sunday, <clears throat> um, my wife had said a few words to me from the scripture, and the Spirit of God just fell on it. <clears throat> and I mean, I was sh literally shaking uh, over His presence, and and I. Uh, uh, I had to get before the Lord this week. And I didn't actually, when he shared it with me, all I was aware of is that this is what he shared with me. <clears throat> I didn't really, at that moment, take into consideration um, that um, this was um, going to be Easter, Easter Sunday. It was going to be over the time, the days that Jesus was crucified. And so during the week as I spent time with him, I began to realize that 2,000 years ago, this was also the time that um, uh, that Jesus uh, had the Last Supper. Kelly, is this thing supposed to be on here too? Okay. And the Last Supper was where he <clears throat> uh, broke bread and said, this is my body and, and the wine. And, and then the Lord took me back thousands and thousands of years around the same time that the Passover took place in Egypt. And uh, where we are now, where we were when, when Jesus was with his disciples during the Lord's Supper, and, which was to celebrate the Passover. And thousands of years before that, where God was bringing Israel out of Egypt. And, you know, the thing, the, a phrase keeps coming into my mind, has God changed? Has God changed? Has God changed? So we're at a, we're at a time in our <clears throat> life that we are sheltering in place. We're sheltering in place, and that, it's a time to do that. It's not ordered by man. Uh, it's, it's out of our control. It's a time that we shelter in place. And it's not based on circumstances. It's not based on... Um, uh, we have circumstances going on, but it's not based on circumstances in God's heart and mind. Has God changed? Has God changed? But God has a plan. God has something on His heart. And so we... We have to do this. We have to go through this time period. We have to enter this. We have to be with the Lord. We have to do this according to His understanding and not just according to the way everybody else is doing it. Um, many for a lot of different reasons. And to me, if, you know, if we don't do it for His reasons, we may miss the true meaning of 2020. And all that we've been praying for, for 10 years, we may miss. And some, you know, I mentioned something I, I, some, last week or sometime. <clears throat> but, you know, some could say, well, we're, we're you know, well, 2020 is all messed up now. We can't. No, no, this is, this is the preparation. You know, that's what, that's what it was when Jesus said to the disciples, go get, you know, this and that for the preparation. There is this preparation time. <clears throat> and um, so, why are we shut in? Why are we shut in? Well, we think we're shut in because there's danger outside. You know, we, we, you know, we have to be shut in. There's danger. And, and that's true, and it is. It is dangerous out there. There's no, no question about that. There's a plague in the land, and we have to be shut in. So then we're going to do it, and we're going to do it for the, the, the good of everyone. <clears throat> but God's got something more involved in this. And, and to really understand that, we need to go to the Scriptures and start looking at that, because 
as I said, there was a time when there was another plague on the land. So go with me, if you would, to Exodus chapter 11. Exodus 11. And we'll look at just uh, verse 1 there. Exodus 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. After, afterwards he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. And then verse 6, this is still Exodus 11. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. So in, during the Exodus, they were shut in. They, they too were shut in. And it was dangerous to go outside. Uh, just like it is for us, but, for, but back then for a different reason, but in a sense, not. Not for a different reason. Not for a different reason. Our reason should be the same. We should still be in tune with the Lord. Has He changed? No, He hasn't changed. So now flip over to the next chapter, Exodus 12 now. <clears throat> Exodus 12. And I want us to look first at verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door, door post of the houses wherein they shall eat. We only think about putting the blood on the doorpost, but this says, shall put it on the two door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat. Wherein they shall eat. Verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So in this story there's <clears throat> danger all around it's you know danger is all around and death is about to be all around you know i read that scripture where when it happened you know the, a great cry went up in the land and so we they sheltered in place we shelter in place but why do we shelter in place why is it because there's danger I mean, is that the reason why we're doing this? Just only because there's danger out there? That's not why they did it. That's not the main reason why they were shut in. Not in God's heart. Not in our hearts. God has a purpose. God has a purpose. Stay in. Stay in your house and eat the lamb. Stay in your house and eat the lamb. That's his purpose. That's his purpose. Exodus 12 now, <clears throat> 1 through, um, let's see, 1 through 3. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month, this month shall be unto you. There must have been another calendar in the whole world. And, and Israel must have followed that calendar. Or maybe they even had their own calendar before that time, and they followed it. But the Lord is speaking to them now, when all of this has taken place, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. This is where it's all going to start. This is where it's all going to start. This is, the, has God changed? Did he change back, back during the Exodus? Has he changed from Jesus when he's saying, take, eat this and do it in remembrance and let's, let this be your new beginning. Lamb in you. It shall be the first month of the year to you. 
Speak you unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb. They shall take to them every man a lamb. Every, every one. That is, the, the Egyptians didn't do that. But those that were of God, of His heart, uh, tuning in to a heart rather than a circumstance. Tuning in to His heart and seeing with His eyes rather than a circumstance. And just being like, like everyone else. Pagans and those who lack the Lord. No. No. This is the beginning, not the end. This is the beginning, not the end. That's, that's his heart. That's his purpose. Every one of you shall take to them, every man, a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Can't get any more plain than that. It is... A lamb in all of the houses of those that are his. Why? Because there's going to be a journey. After this is all past, there's going to be a journey. We'll, we'll address that more as we go. But there's going to be a journey for us if it's one month left or five months left, or one week left, there's going to be a journey at the end of eating lamb. That journey begins with eating lamb. That Passover begins with eating lamb, the beginning of days. So, verse 4 also in Genesis 12 and if the household be too little for the lamb, the lamb's bigger than you think. The household's too little for the lamb. If that's the case, if the lamb is so big in you, then here's what he says. If the household is too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. This lamb is, in God's heart, is big. It's bigger than your household and your issues in your household and my issues in my household and all of ours put together. And he says, if it's, if it's that big, then start sharing it. Well, they couldn't... It, they, Think about this. I mean, they couldn't go out and, you know, because the death angel is going to pass over. We share him. We share him now, and we share him on the journey on the way out, and we share him on the journey on the way in, but we all are filled with lamb. And that comes up here shortly. Okay, Exodus, verse, still in 12, verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Okay, so we see, you know, he, he talks about a destroyer. And in this case, in this scripture, he's saying... He, he's almost like the protector of those who have lamb in them from the destroyer. Let me read that last part again. <clears throat> the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer. He won't allow the destroyer to come into your house and to smite you. He, 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 at the same time, he allowed them to slaughter the lamb if they would eat it. Not just to murder the lamb, but to slaughter the lamb if they would eat it and put his blood 
blood. And I was thinking about it. I woke up in the night and I was thinking about uh, blood. I was thinking about the blood on the doorpost. And I was thinking, you know, a couple of things in relationship to the blood. I was thinking, number one, they probably didn't just take a little, you know, kind of paintbrush uh, type plant and do a little bit over here and then on the lintel and then on the doorpost a little bit. I bet the Lord wanted a big token of it. And I bet the, the people wanted to make sure the destroyer saw it. I think they're practically painting those things. Look! There's slaughtered lamb on the inside here. Not just in the house, but in the people. Because he didn't say... He didn't say, well, if the blood's on the house, I won't destroy the house because it's got the blood on it. Because, but the people don't have the blood on them. He said, if it's on the house, then those that are in that house must have eaten lamb. Okay, so uh, still Exodus 12, verse 7 through 9. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two sides of the post, let's, uh, on the upper post, door post of the houses, of the houses, wherein they shall eat. This wasn't just houses. This wasn't just houses. This wasn't like the neighbor's house over here and the neighbor's house over there. This is the house wherein we eat lamb. That's what this is all about. This is the houses wherein... Let me read that again. <clears throat> and this is verse 7. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts of the upper door post of the houses, the houses wherein they shall eat it. Eat lamb. The only thing that made their house any different than anybody else's wasn't just the blood. The blood, we'll get into that a little more here, is just a token of slaughtered lamb see i mean picture this okay if he said put your blood if he just said this just imagine this if he said uh put your blood on the doorpost and you went out and you cut your finger just a little bit and you put some blood on everywhere he said to do it would he pass over if he asked you your blood i want to see your blood on the doorpost and you did that would he would he pass over the answer is no, he wouldn't pass over because the blood has to be enough splattered all over this thing to show that the lamb did die. Not, well, he was just wounded or hurt or we were just wounded or hurt. And they shall, and they shall eat, they who? Where the houses were in they shall eat, they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Verse 9, eat not of it raw. This thing needs to be burned. This thing needs to be dead. It needs to be um, uh, uh, in the fire. Nor sodden at all with water I mean we're not going to let this lamb be watered down <clears throat> but roast with fire his head with his legs and with the putrids thereof so they're sheltering in place the death angel is passing through but there's purpose there's purpose there's purpose there's purpose there can be purpose for anyone but there's purpose for us. It's passing over our houses because we have slaughtered lamb in us. It's passing over. Pass over. Pass over. Pass over is not just what's on the doorpost. Pass over is what's on the inside of us. So I wrote, we have the token of the death of the lamb on the outside, but guess what? We've had the Reality of the Lamb on the inside. Has God changed? Has God changed from back then? Has He changed His purpose? Has He, oh, let's just, you know, this or that. No, no. That was always a picture of the next time this came up again, which was Jesus 
breaking bread and talking about his death and saying, this is my body, eat it, and I'm the Lamb of God. That's thousands of years till now. And then that of Jesus doing that is thousands of years from then. Has he changed? He hasn't changed. He changed. No. All right. So all of this is being said. All of this is being told. But what if there's no lamb in your house? What if you're not eating lamb? What if you're not uh, in the purpose? In, okay, let's, let's say it better. What if we're not in tune with the heart of the Lord in this thing? What if there was a house and a family of Israelites in Egypt that didn't get the memo because they didn't whatever? They didn't show up for the meeting. Well, I don't know. But what if, what if they didn't, you know? Well, he's not going to pass over. Okay. So uh, this is still Exodus 12, verse 30. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. There was not a house where there was not one dead. There was not a single house where there was not one dead. That, that includes Israel in the phrase of it. It's just that some died for lack of lamb, and some died because they were one with the lamb. <laughs> I love this phrase, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. I could almost write a song to that. For there was not a house where there was not one dead. All right. So here it's talking now. And I, I do apologize if I'm going a little long. I will probably, you know, but this is important. This isn't just another sermon. This isn't, this, this represents not just new creation fellowship in that sense. This represents the, you know, uh, shelter in place thing. This represents what God wants to do with us for sure. But the circumstances are exactly the same in that sense. So this is still Exodus 12, verse 10. And he shall, and ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Okay? Nothing, don't let anything remain. You got slaughtered lamb here. He's roasted, meaning he's put to death. The fire of God fell on him. And he said, don't let any of it remain. Eat it all. Does that sound familiar in relationship to communion? Drink ye all of it. Eat the whole thing. Fill up. You know, don't just nibble. You know, don't just be nibbling at the lamb. Not, not now. Not now. Fill up. Don't leave any of this thing left. And he says, but that which remaineth, burn it all up at the cross. Don't let anything remain. Let it all be burned up. That's, that's what this is saying. What is it saying? Let nothing of the lamb that is outward remain outward. Let only the lamb that is my lamb, saith the Lord, be in you. Not out here, not, not external to you. Not a message. Oh, lamb message. Oh, it's so precious. No, not there. Here, inside, inside, inside of us. Burn it up. And leave nothing left but inward lamb. Okay, so why? Why do you fill up? Why do we want to fill up? Okay, this is uh, Exodus 12, verse 11. And, and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Interesting. Interesting that he's saying this is part of the Passover. It's not just 
kill the lamb. It's not just blood on the doorpost. It's not just shelter in place. This getting ready to go when this is over is big time still part of the Passover. Still part of the Passover. You shall eat it. Yeah, you shall eat it. It says right there, verse, this verse 11. You shall eat it with your loins gird. I'm ready and my shoes on my feet, my staff in my hand, and you eat it in haste. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to just fill up with this thing. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to fool around and go, well, okay, well, let's see. What did this say? Okay, I, I read a scripture about the lamb today. Eat it in haste. You better get ready. This is part of the Passover. It's part of the Passover. There's a journey. You got to be ready for the journey too. Not just the things that, that set it all up. But for the journey. It's like when they wake up the next morning and go, well, we're still alive. You know, get out of bed. We got to go. We got to go. <clears throat> I wrote, when it, when, when time comes for him to bring us out, talking about now, when the time comes for him to bring us out, then we have a journey ahead. Then we've got a journey. There's a journey for us. There's a journey for us. But we have to fill up now. We need to be filling up. We, we, we have to be full of, of lamb when, when it's over. You can't be half full and you can't have it still laying around the house. You know, the book on the lamb and the, the video of the lamb and the, 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 you know, audio of the lamb. By then, all of that needs to be gathered up into real lamb inside of us. And be ready. Be ready. Be ready to go because you're full of lamb and he's ready to take you. Okay. So I put that means that he must be our strength within. The lamb has to be our strength because that was basically that and the, the herbs and the unleavened bread, all of it representative of his death and different angles has to do with being full of this because this lamb is going to be the strength that's going to carry us when this is over. For the journey, for the journey, we're going on the journey. We're not see. I you know, well, well, preacher, pump us up and get us excited when this is over. Let's all meet up the church and listen. Let's just whip us into a lather and we'll be ready to go on this journey. Yeah, let's do it. That no, no, no. We already need to have the strength. We already need to have the wherewithal for the journey. Okay. So I can hear somebody praying, Lord, don't let this thing be over in a week then. <laughs> you know. Okay, well, that's a... How about, Lord, fill me up as quick as you can. I mean, if you want us to carry it in haste, then let's get this thing, the first part, done. <clears throat> and then, why must we be prepared for not just the journey. Why must we be prepared now so that when we're in the journey, why? Okay. This is Psalm 78, verse 51. <clears throat> and smote all the firstborn in Egypt, the chief of their strength, in the tabernacles of Ham. Verse 52 but made his own people to go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. Like, no, he didn't say, and everybody go out and have a good time and go, yeah, da, 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 da. No, you're going out like sheep and he's guiding you like a flock. This is all lamb stuff. This is all his flock. This is his flock. Jesus is a good shepherd, but he's got sheep and, and lambs and that which is of this nature all together and that's how he sees this he sees this so that when we go out we're not a bunch of stubborn and there were goats 
We're not a bunch of uh, independent people with our own ideas of what, well, what God wanted me to do is he wants me to develop my ministry now. No, he doesn't care what ministry in that sense, if you understand what I'm saying. He cares what spirit it's carried out in. And, but made his own people. He made his own. We may be Christian, but are we his own? Made him his own people to go forth. This is talking about leaving Egypt. This is talking about the Passover. To go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. So when we go forth, we need to be conformed. There needs to be a conformity to what died and what wants to live in us and let him live. <clears throat> All right. So now if we if we don't do that, if we don't eat lamb, uh, if we don't fill up, uh, if we don't prepare knowing that all of this is to pre prepare for a journey when this is over he's got something else he wants to do that when this is over there's something in his heart it's there's nothing else in his heart but the journey that he's got so so you know i want to make sure that i filled up i want to make sure that i understand what's going on um and i want to be like a, a sheep and i want us to be like a flock and I want him to be able to be like a good shepherd that gave his life. That he can lead us into giving our life. But if we don't, okay, Psalm 106, verse 6. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. What? What possibly could they be repenting over right here? Clearly, they're aware they have sinned. We would say, well, I sinned. I went out and got drunk after it was over with or something. Some dumb thing. They're saying, we have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Verse 7 says, our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the, at the sea, even at the Red Sea. They did not understand thy wonders in Egypt and they didn't remember the multitude of his mercies. Well, we know that the plagues that went on in Egypt did not make a difference. Only the lamb made a difference. Not just to, for deliverance sake, to God's heart. It's the only thing. That's why people say, why did he harden... Why did he harden Pharaoh's heart? He might have let him go. He's not trying to get him to let go. He's not trying to get him delivered. He's trying to get the lamb revealed and then filling us. That's what, his heart, that's what the deal is. That's what it's all about. But when they got out, you know, they've sinned and committed iniquity and done wickedly in the eyes of the Lord because they didn't understand what all that was about, what all this coronavirus, what all whatever, this shut, you know, shelter in place, uh, what all of this um, uh, understanding that the Lamb is not meant to be, like, like John the Baptist said, behold the Lamb of God, okay? He looked at Jesus and said, behold the Lamb of God. But that's not the one that's going to make the difference. It's the Lamb that's eaten that's going to make the difference. So Jesus says, this is my body, this represents me. Put it in, in you. I'm getting close to ending here. This is Exodus 12, 12. And I have a little, I have a little um, subtitle for this next verse that we're about to read. It is, <clears throat> He will smite firstborn that are not firstborn. He will smite firstborn that are not firstborn. Okay, this is Exodus 12:12. 12, 12. <clears throat> warning, warning! This is getting to the big part here. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn that are not firstborn. 
I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So, so, so listen to the way this is worded. The, this is, it, it's just important. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. And I will smite all the firstborn. Oh my God, the wording of that is powerful. He's, you know, if, if okay, so think of this. If God just in general was was just he just liked the thought of firstborn and it was important and you know all this kind of stuff, then why would he why didn't he just smite the the leaders? I'll go through Egypt and I'll smite all the leaders, but he's smiting the firstborn that are not firstborn that don't have one ounce of lamb in them. So, this whole thing, it was a plague to them. But it's not supposed to be a plague to us. It's not supposed to be a plague to us. I started with Exodus 11, verse 1, and I'll read it again. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Shut in. All of us are shut in. We're all shut in. They're, the Egyptians, you know, in a sense, they're, it's, you know, we're all shut in. And it's a plague to them. It's a plague to the people out there. Now at this time, it was a plague to them 2,000 years ago when Jesus died and they didn't understand it. They didn't know what his life was meant to be in them. It's a plague. But this, this, this time, this time period for us is not a plague. It's not a plague to us. This is the time to get the lamb on the inside. This is the time. This is what he spoke to me. This is why I tremble. This is why I get goosebumps over me as I share this and as I first heard it and as I understood. Because I knew it was the Lord's voice. I, knew, I know his voice, and I know that this was him speaking to us. Stop letting it be a plague to you. you what are you, Egyptians? No. Start eating the Passover. Start eating the lamb and getting ready for the journey. Father, we just thank you for your spirit who only can reveal your son in the way that he truly needs to be seen instead of the way that we would desire him to, in a way that would satisfy our flesh for the moment or that would protect our flesh at the moment or that would, Father, anything relating back to us as if we're the center of everything that you ever do. But Father... I hear your voice and I speak forth what I know to be you. May you give hearing ears and hungry hearts a heart that wants to eat up the lamb, a heart that's hungry, a heart that will eat up, that will devour that lamb, will fill up on it, not leave anything on the external, but will have it on the inside. Father, this is... This is a wonderful time. It's not a plague. It is a wonderful time. Even though it's hard with, with so many things, it doesn't change that. There were, Father, there were people sheltering in place in Egypt, Father, that had children. And it was hard having everybody in the house. And I'm sure they didn't have very big houses. It was hard in so many ways. But, Father, it was you. And they turned it into you. They turned it in. What was, what was a plague to everyone else, they turned it into a feast that became known as the Feast of Passover. 
that became known as the Lord's Supper, that became known as Easter, that became known as eat your son and fill up on him. Father, give us grace between now and the end. Give us grace. Give us grace. In Jesus' name. Amen.